I've been watching you in um, True Detective, which my son recommended, and I'm really enjoying. You, I believe you said in the book that the script leapt off the page for you. It did, especially the words of the character Rustin Cole. Right, right, who you play. Marty Hart role that Woody played. Yes. You were offered that role. Yes. Yeah. And I read the thing, and I remember telling him, I said, guys, I understand why you're coming to me for Marty Hart. I go, but the guy who I cannot wait to turn the page to see what comes out of his mouth is this guy, Rustin Cole. And they were a bit surprised. Yeah, well, they're both complex characters, so you could see that either of them might have been attractive. But I was, I, I, I was quite struck by your your characterization of of Cole. Um, it reminded me of Heath Ledger, and that's why I wanted to talk to you about it. You you play a dark character very well, if you don't mind me saying so. I mean, thank you. Um, it's believable. Uh, I've known some dark people, and. Your portrayal is believable, very believable. And so that makes me wonder what price you pay for that. It's kind of a cliche, you know, you play a dark role and it invades you, but it isn't obvious to me how you can play a dark role without it invading you. And then, or at least you have to allow something dark in yourself to come out and respond to that. And you're very different on the screen playing Rust and Cole than you are in a romantic comedy role, clearly. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's somewhat surprising to see that transition, which I guess is why other people might be surprised by that too, which is why you actually had a bit of a hiatus when you stopped taking rom-com roles. But I'm curious, like, what did it, what were the consequences for you of playing that character in particular, but dark characters in general? The dark, the dark characters, the, the baddie, usually has so much more identity than the white knight, than the hero in stories that I read in scripts and things. Um, the dark characters and are also, they're, they're all, always usually outsiders. And I, the consequence is that if I'm really going to portray one of those well, that part of myself, I'm putting myself on an island. And I love, and I'm, and that excites me. I want it to be, I want to feel like the underdog. I want to feel like I don't have to pander to manners or graces. I'm living by different rules and not even to prove a point, but just it's in a Russian Coles position, someone who just, you know, I didn't make big acting choices with Rustin Cole. I just did what I could to understand the text so well that I could just say it and not have to solicit it or, Again, Rust, Rustin Cole was a guy who preferred his own company to anyone else's and, 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 and that solitude. That was a vacation for me. Also, to, as a person who is a believer, to have to, to, to be in and in a, in, in inhabit a character who is not a believer at all. And here's why. Um, I'll tell you, I'll, I've always thought this was odd. At the time that I chose and wanted to go and have it, Rustin Cole, was the time that my faith was strongest. And if my faith would have been as strong, I might have been a little more fearful of going so deep into this man's mind, spirit, and ethos. And so I you had, had some protection. But, and, but I trust He's very nihilistic, the, the character yeah, yeah. Cole. He's, he reminds me, there's a philosopher in South Africa who's an anti-natalist. Um, unfortunately, his name escapes me for a moment. I, I had a debate with him a couple of years ago, but his basic premise is that conscious suffering is so morally untenable as a phenomenon that all life should cease. That if we were making the proper moral choices, we'd stop reproducing. But not only that, that we'd, we'd also do what we could well, we can leave it at that, that we'd stop reproducing, because if you sum up a life, it's it's bitter and and the bitterness overwhelms the sweet. And so it's cruelty to perpetuate. Uh, yes, I, I think that is, is is beautiful and in many ways true. And I think it's also hilarious. Um, 
what strikes you as, as comical about that? You, you laughed about it. and well, Because that's where, of course, of course, we're on the way to dying. You talk about it all the time. It's tough. It's cruel. It's hard. We're out here. This thing is, okay, I'm in. So that's inevitable. That's the strange thing, you know, and I, I felt too. I mean, I can certainly <laughs> understand the argument. But if I, 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 I hear it and, I, and it adds up. But if that's but, inevitable, which I think we can all say that's inevitable. It's like we're on the way to dying. It's over. What's it, we don't we'll never know if this is the end or not. So hell, you know, or or if there's anything after it, and it is, it's hardships and overcoming. Okay, since that's inevitable, and we got to do this thing anyway, if we're choosing to stay in life another day. So what's a better way to go about it? Saying it's all for nothing or realizing right there when you go, it's all for nothing. No, that's why the fucking it's all for everything. Yeah, well, They're in the it same also place. seems to me that if your objection to life is it's suffering, adopting an attitude that will make that suffering worse is probably not a reasonable solution. And that, that's that's where that grounds out for me. There's no construction in there. What, what, what I mean... <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing affirmative or life giving about that. It's not making the best of the situation if the situation's doomed day. Eh? So, you know, I'm not for Hallmark cards and, and delusional optimism, but I mean and, and in this way I would say optimism is survival. It's like, well, okay. If it's all for nothing. I think optimism is courage. If it's not naive. And one of the things I liked about your book too was that your optimism wasn't naive. And, you know, because you had enough harsh experiences so that any naive optimism would have vanished. 